This is what spawn looks like on Simply Vanilla. Two players placed 125 million water blocks using flying machines. This changed the server spawn forever. Removing this amount of water was impossible. Wait, where is the water? The water cube is gone. In this video I will tell you all about the several groups who were fed up with the massive water cube at spawn and how they painstakingly cleared it using some of the biggest flying machines I have ever seen. In places where flying machines couldn't reach they had to switch to manually placing blocks over the water. All this while being attacked by PvPers at spawn on an active energy server. Watch the video till the end to hear the entire story. Also subscribe right now and join the 600 community members in the Discord. I'm doing a giveaway sponsored by Pants Shop, the biggest player shop on Simply Vanilla. We're giving away a full starter kit and a shulker of totems. So if you've never played on Simply Vanilla before or you just want some extra gear, this is your chance. To enter the giveaway, just join the Discord and react to the message in the giveaway channel. And obviously you have to subscribe as well. The giveaway will end in a week, so be quick. It all started about 10 months ago, when two players named Panka and Jotek from a group called STC decided to completely flood spawn. It only took them 6 days to place 125 million water blocks using some pretty simple flying machines. This project would seemingly change spawn forever. Months went by and people grew more and more frustrated with all of this water sitting in the middle of spawn. It made spawn easier to escape for new players and for PvPers it was very frustrating since it's way harder to have a decent crystal PvP fight in the water. Most people thought it was impossible to clear all the water, but after some time people started making plans. One day an older Simply Vanilla player named Negikun decided that he was going to clear the water cube. Of course that's easier said than done, but he was serious about the idea. He knew that so many people would want the spawn clean again and so he started asking around for help. He began asking in his own group, Nazgul, and soon he had some interested players willing to help. Now he just needed a good plan and some help setting up the project. The project was named The Great Spawn Reset and the organizers were some of the most legendary players known to Simply Vanilla. Operator Joe, also known as King of Simply Vanilla, he would be the redstone mastermind of the project. Negikun, a key member in the project, his role would be the general project overview and he would end up being the most active member in the project. Angvart, an important member in the Blackers clan who managed to get the help from Blackers in the project, he would also be an important redstoner. Kenny, one of the most legendary players on Simply Vanilla and an absolute genius when it comes to redstone. Many players from several different groups came to help with the project. To manage all the people in the project, the people were split into three roles. The technicians. They were to deal with the machine sweepers, basically setting them up, destroying them afterwards, all that kind of stuff. The block engineers. They had to clear the obstructions for machine paths, which mostly would be ice and cobblestone. The security and resource people. They had to provide resources and security to the project. So to make the operation more feasible, it was also split in three phases. The first phase was to remove all of the ice and obsidian on top of the water cube. Then phase 2 would be create flying machines that go across spawn and clear the water. And phase 3 will be explained later. Phase 1 was gonna be the easiest part of the operation. But of course everything is easy compared to deleting an insanely big water cube. So all of the obsidian and ice on the surface had to be removed to clear the way for phase 2. For this part the rolls didn't matter as much because all the help was needed. After a full day of work the obsidian was almost completely removed but the ice was still a very big problem. Negi and the others first used a ton of picks to mine through the ice and after a while Negi noticed that this was taking way too long. So he bought a bunch of TNT and he started blowing the ice up. After almost 4 days phase 1 was complete and all of the ice and obsidian was cleared from spawn. So during phase 1, Operator Joe, Kenny and Angvart were testing sweeper designs to see which one would be the best for the job. Different designs were tried and eventually they found the right one. In this message, Operator Joe explains exactly how the machine is built. 
Okay, too many numbers. Just look at how insane these flying machines are. Oh my god, I have never seen anything remotely as big on the server. So with the design ready to go, the group could get the materials needed by trading with player shops and they could start setting up the machines. The machine was so big that it needed 3 to 4 people to stand on it to load the entire machine. There were several members in the group that could not load the machine because it was causing them too much lag and they would literally just crash. So a few machines were set up and they could finally start clearing the water. Even though there was a lot of support for the water reset project, it was only a matter of time until something went wrong. On day 1 of phase 2, the problems began. A PvPer at spawn had joined the project while phase 1 was being conducted. He started helping the group to clear the ice and he actually made some pretty good progress. He even killed a malicious PvPer at spawn protecting the rest of the ice removers. However, for some reason his PvP brain malfunctioned and out of the sudden he started killing group members. This happened when a 128 block long flying machine was just created. The trader and his PvP brain friends showed up where the machine was being made and they took the flying machine hostage. While this was going on, one of the project leaders, Angvard, was AFK on the flying machine and the entire group was screaming at him on the VC trying to get him back on his keyboard. In order to save his gear, they pushed him in the water and made him drown so they could collect his stuff. They also couldn't just crystal the PvPers on top of the machine because they didn't want to damage the sweepers. Eventually though, the PvPers griefed the machine so they had to rebuild it afterwards either way. Even though these events did give a slight interruption, they still managed to clear 25% of the water at spawn on the first day. The next day, while a water sweeper was running, Joe was scouting out spawn and saw Jotek from STC. A little bit before this, Jotek had asked who was cleaning up spawn, and I'm guessing at the moment he was looking for them at spawn. But Operator Joe jumped him. Very soon, Negikun also got on, and he asked Francis to join as well. They were 3 v one Jotek when Jotek also requested backup from his team. Then Negi asked Seedog. Genesis and other players to reinforce them. And before they knew it, this turned in an all out war. Even random PvPers started fighting both sides, and the battle went on for a while. While this war was going on on one side of spawn, the sweeper was happily working the other side of spawn, so no actual progress was lost while this was going on. After this big confrontation died down, STC, the group from Panka, and Jotek, who made the water cube, were thinking about sabotaging the project even more. Luckily, Operator Joe had a solution for this. The group STC had a bunch of spawn projects like highways on the nether roof. Well, Joe's idea was that if anyone from STC would try to sabotage their water cube removal project, they would destroy STC's spawn projects. Now, not everyone in the group was a fan of this idea because everyone likes the highways on the nether roof. And this would have definitely caused a lot of conflict in the water reset project. Luckily, it never came to that and STC was scared off by the threats. After this, no big fights broke out and the spawn reset project was further conducted relatively peacefully. In the nights when Simply Vanilla was least active, Operator Joe and Angvard ran the machines the most. The water was getting removed pretty quickly now and at the peak of the projects there were so many sweepers that it literally created one big lag machine at spawn. These sweepers could be made as small or as big as possible and one of the biggest they made was more than 200 blocks wide. The server was lagging so badly at some points that when new players joined they immediately left or got kicked because of the lag at spawn. After some days, remarkable progress was made and the group celebrated it in their Discord. Also, Operator Joe being Operator Joe, all of a sudden decided to leave the project and Simply Vanilla altogether. He randomly started up his own server and I promised him that I would promote his server in the video. So, there you go. <laughs> Operator Joe leaving the project wasn't that terrible because the hardest part was already done, the sweepers and the sweeper designs. So when the water was low enough, the sweepers couldn't be used anymore and the manual work had to begin. The first few days, people worked hard and lowered the water by almost another 100 blocks. By now the most exciting part of the project was over and people started losing interest. A lot of people were satisfied with what they had accomplished and slowly quit the project, even though there were still some big water patches near the bottom. But everyone in Simply Vanilla was happy, spawn was basically cleared from the water and people could fight at 0-0 again. Negi however still tried to motivate people to continue till the end, but it wasn't enough. So he spent weeks training water at spawn, man. Annually. 
While he was doing this, he asked me to join him and he showed me what he was doing. While he was showing me this at spawn, we were flying around and we found Bedrock that wasn't supposed to be there. It's probably glitched from when the server updated to 1.18 and I have never seen anything like this so I had to put it in the video. The last thing that was done was the spawn castle. If you're not familiar with Simply Vanilla lore, there is a massive obsidian spawn castle that was constructed during the first incursion on the server. To preserve this castle, it was put inside a water cube and this water cube had overflowed into the big spawn spawn water cube, creating a massive chunk of water that was hard to get rid of. Negi, together with a few other players, decided to manually block off the spawn castle water cube to contain the water. This would again clear up a big part of water at spawn and after 3 days of hard work this was also finished. Now spawn looks like this. Yes, the water is not completely gone but the difference with what spawn looked like a few months ago is insane. The Great Spawn Reset project was seen as successful by the Simply Vanilla community. It was cheered on during the whole process with at some point people spamming push, push to cheer on the water sweepers at spawn. And now you're probably asking, what about phase 3? Well, that never happened since everyone was satisfied with what they had accomplished and there was no motivation in the group to do anything else. One of the ideas they had for phase 3 was to spawn like a hundred waiters named Operator Joe is the king of Simply Vanilla. But <laughs> because Operator Joe left, it was kind of pointless. Now, I encourage anyone that has some resources on Simply Vanilla, start lava casting spawn right now. Because you don't want any other bozo putting another water cube over it. So yeah, this is the end of the video and don't click off yet because we need to thank all these amazing people that put in hours of their work to make the spawn great again. Simply Vanilla Spawn was plagued by this water cube for like 6 to 7 months. It was incredible. And I didn't even play the server but it still bothered me. So, all the people on screen, you are amazing. Thank you so much. Also, Seadog, Negikun, Angvart, Operator Cho, everyone that helped me write this video. I really, really want to thank you guys. And of course, Snoshmok, thank you for making the thumbnail and the renders you see in the video. You can follow him on Reddit. He's an amazing guy and a great friend of mine. He helps me with so much. So big shout out to him.